When we talk about prostate cancer, what in particular makes that small gland get cancer? Why is that little thing producing cancer or cancer going to that little area? Well, there's a couple reasons. I'll give you two offhand. Aside from, you know, patients will say, well, the usual, you know, bad habits and the toxins and all mm -hmm. this. But you're asking too specific for that gland and two good reasons for you. One is that it is a high metabolic uh, gland. Anything in the body that has, has, that's being affected by either high metabolism or by toxic caustic compounds, you're going to have cancer. Hence, smoking. Why smoking will cause cancer. Uh, alcohol will cause cancer, something caustic. Now, you might say, what, what is he referring to with the prostate? I'll tell you something. It's called testosterone. Now, you and I went through puberty. You know what mm -hmm. that stuff did to our brains, right? <laughs> well, now imagine yeah. it bathing in the prostate. And, and I'm being a little flippant, but that hormone is powerful for a reason. Let me give you another flip example. Adrenaline. You know, when, you get, when I get chased by the police on the highway and you get that spike of adrenaline go through your arteries, that adrenaline spike is cortisol. Cortisol, it's a hormone. You need it. Mm -hmm. But when you get a spike of it, the reason it works so well is because it's so caustic. It forces the body to have a reaction quickly. And when you feel that burning sensation, it's because that hormone is literally burning inside your artery. Now, you know, once you outrun the sheriff or something, that's okay. And because, or, or you're going to be mauled by a tiger you know, through an mm -hmm. evolution standpoint. But if you're constantly under stress, worrying about the bills, worrying about traffic, whatever it is, that slow drip of adrenaline hormone burns away in your arteries, and hence you get cholesterol buildup as an example, why stress creates heart attacks. Same thing, hormones like that are very, they, they, that really affect the body, they tend to create cancer in the organs around them. And the same with the breast with women. Estrogen is the same sort of mm -hmm. thing, again, the corollary. So that's the first reason, is that hormones, certain hormones are very caustic because they work so well. Okay, just look at Arnold mm -hmm. Schwarzenegger, you know, they were guys that pumps <laughs> testosterone, that's the reaction. Sure. The second reason is it's a design flaw, <laughs> okay? You know, the prostate is in a position that doesn't get much movement. You know, my, my grandmother used to yell at me when I was younger and my brother, we got the old, uh, you're about my age, Atari 2600. Oh, that was sit all day. Yeah, we all play <laughs> Yars Revenge all day, you know, we didn't go outside. You know, you know, yeah, I know. About. So I'd be playing that game, and she'd say, Frankie, Frankie, get out. You know, get out of the house, you know. She'd say, if you don't get out and move the bones, she'd say. If you don't move the bones, you'll get sick. Mm -hmm. I thought, well, what does she know? Yeah. Well, she knows a lot. She's my Polish grandma, but she was wiser than me. Because it turns out that she was right. She just didn't know. Why? When you move, you actually move the second circulatory system that you have. That's the lymphatic mm -hmm. system. You know, your cardiac system... You have a heart that will beat regardless, but your other circulatory system doesn't have a second heart to move your lymphatics. The lymphatics are where your white, where your white blood cells reside. And if you don't move that, then your white blood cells, which are the police force to stop disease and cancer, mm -hmm. they can't do their job. So you have to be moving by strengthening and pumping muscles. Well, going back to the prostate, the prostate is in an area that you don't really get much movement to. When I walk, and I'm from Philly, so I tend to strut, you know, your whole body kind of moves. But if you actually plotted somebody walking, their arms move, their head moves, but their pelvis stays almost straight. Mm -hmm. And they're not getting much movement. Traditionally, though, we've adapted enough as human beings where we would get some flow by opening and closing the pelvis. How? One was squatting. You know, when you defecate, and I went to college in Japan, and I've spent time in other countries, the third world, for instance, um, they squat to defecate. In Africa, the same thing. That's what you're supposed to do. Most people around the world, they can squat and not tip over like Americans tend to. And, and that is that constant opening and flexing that allows the pelvic area to move with the lymph. Mm. You climb trees, you squat to plant corn. We don't do that. We sit all the time like this, mm. and then you sit and drive, and you're on this prostate gland that needs to breathe, and we're putting weight on it everywhere we go. And as a corollary to make sense with this, women, we think, began to have breast cancer more after the invention of the underwire bra. 
Right? You may have heard that yep. because the lymphatic system is under there, the tail of Spence, and especially women, if they have larger breasts and you have these tight wires, it cuts off the circulation and women get these fibrotic nodules around that realm. Mm -hmm. Same thing, there's a lymph nodes that, get, that are not able to circulate with estrogen dominating and you know, bathing that gland, breast and prostate again, you'll see there, brother and sister.